Hi, I'm Brad with Big Family Homestead, and today I've got a video that's going to show you how you can make wheatgrass for wheatgrass juice at your home on a pretty big scale for uh, just about any size family. And uh, so let's get to it. Now, wheatgrass is an incredible source of all kinds of vitamins and minerals that can truly kick your body's immune system in the pants and, and give you a health boost that you have not had in years and years and years. It does so much uh, for your body and is a so amazing thing that you really do need to consider having as a, a part of your normal diet. I'm not going to go all over the uh, crazy health benefits here today. This video is specifically designed to show you how we grow our wheatgrass and we grow it on a pretty big scale. So here we go. So here is a quick shot of our wheatgrass system, our wheatgrass growing system. Uh, we are not going to dwell too much on the construction of this system because I have another video on it. This video is mainly about how to grow your wheatgrass for juicing or feeding your animals or whatever you may need to use it for. Okay, so the first thing that we do is we measure out one cup of wheat berries into a nice mason jar like this. The mason jars work out real well because of this. See this? You take your top, cut a little bit of screen, and that way when you have to rinse your wheat berries or you gotta um, drain them out and clean them up, so you just screw this on the top here just like this, and that way when you have to strain your berries and anything like that, they don't all come flying out. Now, what you do is you've got your one cup of berries. Now, a note on that, uh, we use one cup because it works well in our trays. You may need to use less or more. This is completely based on the size of your trays and the output of wheatgrass that you want. But for us, it's one cup. And what you do, you go ahead and get filled up with water. What you're gonna do, you wanna give it a rinse. So you're gonna swash it around. Try not to make too much of a mess. You're gonna rinse these guys off and then you're gonna dump that water. If you're crazy like I am, you could do it twice, but you don't have to. Now that's rinsed off. Now what you're going to do is you're going to fill this up to about double the height of your wheatgrass berries that are in there. So it looks something like this, something like that. And you're basically going to go ahead and stick this in a dark place, which you could just throw a towel over it for 12 hours, 12 hours. Okay, now that our 12 hours is up, we have waited and look, they've gotten a little bit bigger. Some of them are starting to grow a hint of a, a tail, but now what you do is you drain off this water. Go cover it back up in the dark. And then in about a day, day and a half, this is going to be ready to hit your trays. Okay, so now what we've got here is our second day in. This is what our sprouted seed looks like. And if I can get in there a little closer, see all those little tails? Those are our awesome sprouts. These are ready to go in our tray and start growing like crazy wheatgrass. Now these trays we got from a grocery store that was going out of business. I believe they were donut trays. And if you see over here, we basically drilled some holes in them so that the water can flow through. Now you can use whatever kind of container you want. This just really works well for our fodder system. And then the next step is putting our sprouted seeds into your tray. So that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. And for the video, I'm not gonna try and grab every single one out. But what you do is you wanna spread them out nice, get them all around there. Try to make the, la the layer as single high as you can. Spread them out. Now these guys are ready to go into the fodder system, the uh, wheatgrass growing system. So here's our freshly sprouted seed, and it's gonna go right on into our wheatgrass system. Oh, and I put that backwards. My shim needs to be on the other side so that the water flows properly. Let's go zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. There we go. 
Now just to touch on one thing that I find is very important, a lot of people do their wheatgrass in a variety of ways and that is perfectly fine. Um, we do it the specific way we do because mainly we started out uh, growing the wheatgrass to feed our rabbits. We have rabbits and chickens and it is an extremely awesome healthful, healthful way that the rabbits can get more nutrition out of the same seed. Now that said, there's guys who've grown it in, uh, in, in uh, dirt and soil and that's fine too, but this is what I wanted to touch on. that The, uh, the nutrition that's in one of those wheatgrass seeds, it does not need to draw from the soil to get to its full potential. What I'm saying is that when you get that sprouted seed and it starts to grow, all of that energy is coming out of the seed and when it's finally to full peak length, that's when you're gonna harvest it anyway. So you don't need the soil. I do understand why some people want the soil. For our use, we go soil less because we're not gonna be regrowing it. Uh, we don't regrow it. I've, I, I've seen people who can regrow it once or twice and then uh, they get a second harvest out of it. For us, we lop that stuff off, we juice up the juice for ourselves, and then we give the mat and the seed kernels to our chickens and our rabbits, and they love it. So there's no waste for us at all, and uh, we don't have to have that extra burden of dealing with the soil and all that kind of management. Okay, now that we've got our uh, new seeds put in their tray, and as you can see, the different stages of growth. These are older and older. We've got bigger grass and wheat grass and keep going. We're going to turn on the uh, fodder system that we have, our wheat grass growing system. Just to show you quickly how it works, this is not the how to build yours, but basically we've got a, a pump way down there in our water, pumps it up here, and then we zigzag, there's a downhill slope, there's holes there, downhill slope, there's holes there, downhill slope, there's holes there, and on such and such and such. Now a quick word on how often we flood this system. We've basically, uh, we're still experimenting for the perfect amount of watering time, but we basically get in here and we will let this pump run and drip through all of these different trays about 15 to 20 minutes, two times a day. And that's it, because if you go a lot, it will um, actually stay too wet and it'll get moldy, and you don't want that. All right, now a quick word on the length of time that the uh, freshly sprouted seeds stay into this system until they're fully mature. We have experienced between seven and eight days from the sprouted time when it's right here, just brand new fresh, till it's about five to six inches and really nice lush green, ready to juice wheatgrass or feed to your animals. And uh, so that's, that's it, it's pretty, uh, pretty awesome. So as you can see, it's not that hard to do and you can make awesome, super healthful uh, wheatgrass juice for you and your family for literally pennies per tray, which is a nice size tray. So if you like the video, please don't forget to click like and subscribe. It honestly and truthfully does help our family out. And uh, once again, I'm Brad for Big Family Homestead and you have an amazing day.